Good morning to St Luke's Prestonville. This is the second Sunday in Advent, uh, Sunday the 6th of December. First time we've been allowed to run a service back in church since the end of the second lockdown. Uh, you join um, the people who are here in church, you've been here for the last 15 minutes, who have all been waiting so that we can light our candles on the Advent wreath together. For in this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for God to come into our world, we are seeking light. After each of these short sentences, could you please respond with, we are seeking light. In our own lives, we are seeking light. In our neighbourhoods, we are seeking light. In St Luke's, we are seeking light. In Prestonville, we are seeking light light. In Brighton and Hove, we are seeking light. In our families, we are seeking light. In our nation, we are seeking light. In our world, we are seeking light. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and it will be given to you. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. May we have eyes to see you and ears to hear you. Come into our world today. Amen. I did um, a video for Stanford Junior School's assembly where we also talked about the Advent wreath and how comforting life, light, particularly candlelight, is as we welcome light into our world.
As we hear the emergency services go past the church, we're aware that not everything is light, that there are many dark things in our lives, sometimes of our own making, and so we come to confession. Holy and loving God, we have dwelt in darkness and preferred it to the light. We have been proud of our accomplishments and despaired over our shortcomings. Smooth down the mountains of our pride and lift up the valleys of our doubts. Open a path in the wilderness of our lives that we might find our way to you again. Refine us and re prepare us once again for life in your kingdom. Please hear our prayer and forgive us, O Lord. The voice of one comes crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. A messenger prepares the way, transforming us like the refiner's fire, calling us to account. For the prophets of old have spoken, announcing the breaking open of the dawn, guiding our feet in the way of peace. Merciful God, Forgive us when we are quick to point the finger at someone else. Forgive us when we put our heads down and ignore the cries of injustice. Forgive us when we presume to understand the complexities of issues that divide and distract. Merciful God, forgive us, heal us, encourage us and speak through us that we may be transformed through the refiner's fire, that we may be forgiven and washed clean as we hear the cry of John the Baptist to straighten out our lives in readiness for the arrival of God. Amen. So this second Sunday of Advent, as we prepare to meet Jesus ourselves, we're thinking about John the Baptist, who was telling the people in Jesus' time to prepare for the coming of the Messiah by repenting and being baptised. 
Um, and William is going to read for us from the Gospel of Mark. Here begins the wonderful story of Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. In the book written by the prophet Isaiah, God announced that he would send his son to earth and that a special messenger would arrive first to prepare the world for his coming. This messenger will live out in the barren wilderness, Isaiah said, and will proclaim that everybody must straighten out his life to be ready for the Lord's arrival. This messenger was John the Baptist. He lived in the wilderness and told that all should be baptised as a public announcement of their decision to turn their backs on sin so that God could forgive them. People from Jerusalem and all over Judea travelled out into the Judean wastelands to see and hear John, and when they confessed their sins, he baptised them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from camel's hair, and he wore a leather belt. Locusts and wild honey were his food. Here is a sample of his preaching. Someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with God's Holy Spirit. Thank you, William. I'm hoping that we can have uh, young people doing our readings throughout this Advent season. So um, imagine that you got up this morning and made the effort to get to church, which is the first time we've been able to do that for a month or so, or spent some time navigating your way around the internet to find our online service. I admit sometimes it's quite hard to find as Facebook keeps on changing its setup, um, so that you could take part in, in some worship and prayer, either in church or online, and listen to a sermon. But when it comes to the talk, as we have now, I just said, actually, I'm not gonna do a talk today. Uh, you'll just have to wait for someone better to turn up, someone who's gonna have a, a much better um, message for you and be a much better preacher than I ever will be. You'll be better off waiting for them rather than listening to me blathering on. Um, you might not be too happy having made the effort to get here in the first place, especially if as the hearers of uh, John the Baptist would have made this journey out into the wilderness to see this wild preacher that they'd heard might be a prophet. You'd be even more upset if he then said that since you were there, might be a good idea to use your time profitably, profitably by making a public declaration that you're going to stop doing anything wrong and to prove it to everybody by letting him dunk you in the River Jordan. You'd be um, maybe disappointed, possibly impatient or annoyed by having to wait and a bit daunted, and maybe even fearful about doing what John the Baptist wanted if you were going to join in with that. These are all emotions of Advent. They're all the kinds of things that we want to be thinking about during this season. A whole theme of getting ready so that we can wait as part of the Advent season. Expectation about what is to come. Impatience as we count the days down to Christmas and the real event, daunted by the need to sort ourselves out so that we are absolutely ready. These are all the things that we naturally associate with Advent, but there's one other thing that is um, an important part of the story of John the Baptist and also an important part of Ad the Advent, which used to be more a front of mind than it is now because we've kind of lost touch with it and that's the need to repent to declare that we're putting behind us all the things that stand between us and God so that we can focus on him unencumbered with all the messiness of our normal lives Originally, Advent was a season of fasting and confession, which began on the Feast of St. Martin, which is the 11th of November, an armistice day for us these days. And was sometimes it was described that period from the 11th of November up to Christmas as the Lent of St. Martin. It was meant to be a season like Lent, where you give up things, and particularly you fast and pray three times a day and it pretty much mirrors Lent in the, in, the, in the way that it works as timing because it's also approximately 40 days 
excluding Sundays in the same way that Lent is. What Advent has become in our Western culture is the opposite to this. It's become a season of excess and hedonism. Instead of fasting, it's usually filled with office parties, with work Christmas dinners, with school celebrations and pantomimes and all kinds of parties. Instead of abstinence and self-denial, it's become a season of excessive spending and extravagant consumerism. Perhaps this year we have a chance to recapture something of that original uh, atmosphere of the Lent of St Martin. As we're still enduring the restrictions of the coronavirus pandemic, we've got an opportunity to regain that original spirit of Advent because everything is restricted uh, whether we like it or not and so we have an opportunity to replace the things that we would have been doing with a greater focus on God and on getting ourselves ready for God. Most of us are trying to plan how we might be able to get through the Christmas season with something approaching normality and we might be able to get together with those we love particularly and some of us are having to make hard decisions about who we see who we welcome into our homes and how that's going to work and for many it won't be seeing as many people as they are normally used to or enjoying Christmas in the way that they would would, would have done in past years for example here at the vicarage we would normally be holding um, a Christmas drinks party for, for local people and for people in the church at some point uh, at some point in December but we can't do that this year of course uh, here in church we'd normally be planning various uh, carol services and maybe a crib service or an nativity play a Christingle service all things that are difficult to achieve this time um, and so they, we're, they're not going to be happening all of these things take time and effort to prepare. Welcoming guests into your home takes time and effort to prepare, setting up a party, setting up a carol service. So how about this year? You take some of that time that you might normally have used in these kinds of preparations to focus instead on preparing to meet Jesus. In reality, if I told you that Jesus was coming to your house for Christmas, you'd want to do something. You'd want to do some sort of preparation to get ready. You'd make up the spare bedroom, you'd get some loaves and fishes in, I don't know, whatever you feel is appropriate for Jesus. This year, let's take this Advent as a time to prepare our hearts to receive Jesus, to meet with him in a real way, without being distracted by all the frivolity and excess that usually goes along with the Advent season. I hope that you'll find that some of the things that we're offering here at St Luke's will give you a chance to do some of that and that you will meet Jesus in a new way over these coming weeks. Let us pray together. Father, we think about what it is to be prepared this Advent time for the coming of Christ. That through these ever-changing times, we would look afresh and understand something new about your very nature, of the way that you delight in us and sustain us. We know that our celebrations of Christmas will be very different this year. And we keep close in mind those who are facing a different kind of celebration. For those who will be unable to be close with their families, whether given or chosen ones, and their loved ones through circumstance or through loss. We pray for those who have lost loved ones this year at a time where many have more time to think, to reflect and to miss those around us. I pray they will feel your comfort. May we understand that although we are unable to meet together, that we belong. 
that we are welcomed, that we are valued as members of the family of God. As the nights draw in and darkness surrounds, we remember that the light is coming. I pray that in our lives and in our communities, that we allow that light to shine through us. Knowing that just a glimpse of your light can transform lives. We pray that when we feel weak, our strength is restored in you and our hope grows. Enable us to love more, to care more and to grow more. Father, we pray for our world, recognising that people's experience of it is quite different at the moment, where some areas are freer and some areas remain locked down. Father, we pray that although we feel disconnected, that we find connection in you and ways to find connection in each other. We praise you, Father, for all the things that we have and ask that you would remain with us and remind us to be grateful for the things that you provide. When things are difficult, we pray for an abundance of joy, living in this space of unknown. We pray for peace, a peace which the world cannot give us, but comes only from you. Prepare our hearts to welcome you during this Advent time that we might be poised to hear your voice and be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we come to a time to remember Jesus, we want to welcome him into our lives. And I'm going to begin with the collect for today. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds that when your son Jesus Christ comes again as judge and saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. And in a very real way, we meet him when we remember him in the way that he asked us to. For on the night before he died, Jesus was at supper with his friends. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. At the end of supper he took the wine, he 
blessed it and gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so we join with the church in the whole world as we say together the Lord's Prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I mentioned in my talk that we're not going to be doing carol services and things like that because of the restrictions, but we have set some things up which you can engage with um, on the corner of the church land, on, between, on, on the corner of Old Shawn Road and Stanford Road. We've set up a nativity scene like this, that you can come and take a selfie of you, you or your children with that. And alongside that, there is also um, a set of angel wings that have been set up specifically for selfie purposes so you can come along with your friends and your cameras you can take a picture of yourself as a Christmas angel you can join in with the nativity as part of your preparation for Christmas it will be lovely to see photographs you can post them on our Facebook page and while you've taken them or um or send us to, so we're trying to set up we've set up a hashtag st luke's prestonville not quite sure how that works but i'm sure if you you can find ways to get us photographs if you're able to take some we pray that some of these activities will bring you some comfort and joy this advent season so we go with a blessing and our final song so I pray that you will be blessed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit with all the comfort and joy that the triune God can bring you. Hear the songs of angels rise through dark and dry. Sound of glory. Bringing tidings of great joy, no sorrow can destroy salvation story. Join with the angels. 